Welcome back to the Fullerton College Pre-Press class project tutorial on placing files into InDesign for our first playing card deck project. Again, if you're just joining me midstream, this is Professor Ben Kewitt from Fullerton College's Printing Technology Department. Now that I've got that mouthful out of the way, let's get back to work. Last time we set up our document, we set up our page size, we ignored margins because, ha, this isn't Microsoft Word. We set our bleed space to make sure we're able to give the illusion of printing to the edge by trimming off our bread crust. Now let's take a look at one of the most powerful features of InDesign, which really looks like one of its simplest. The things I like best about InDesign typically are not the things that they do, but the things that it does not do. In any case, we're going to bring a file from outside in to be able to put pictures and graphics into a design and a layout that we're doing here. InDesign is not the place that you want to create graphics, and InDesign is not the place that you want to edit photos. But photos and graphics edited outside this program can be brought in. I'm hesitating to use the very loaded word import because they don't actually import them. They only place a link inside so that when the document gets exported to be printed or distributed through other means, the computer then uses all the images that were inside your, uh, your layout as a packing list to remember what to put into the final document. It saves space and processor time by not having to import a whole image in here. And by not importing it, it's also not touching it. It's not changing resolution. It's not changing color settings. It doesn't touch your picture. Which, when you're working with professional artists and photographers who are very good in their field and spend a lot of their life learning how to properly take a good photo, the last thing you want to do is to pull an MS Word, take their picture, and change it on them without asking. Or worse, without you knowing. InDesign promises not to do that to you. Let's take a look at how you do this. I prefer a method of creating a frame uh, or a box. So I use my frame tool over here, and I'm going to draw a frame the size of my bleed. You can see there's an X through it. This is an empty frame. I can turn this into a colored graph if I wanted. You can always, let me bring this down a little. I have my uh, recording software blocking my toolbar, which is suboptimal. You can go ahead and give it a fill if you want and give it a color, and it could be a part of your graphic. I'm not going to. I am going to place a file inside. Remember, when you have all these different file types, and InDesign supports nearly every type of file out there, that you could possibly want to put in. It's a trick question to say, how do I open a PDF or how do I open a JPEG or how do I open an SVG? Because the answer is really you can't. InDesign does not open them. Open implies editing capability. And I'm actually saying this is a good thing. It does not have the capability to edit them. And that is wonderful. You can place them inside. Um, for those of you who like to use the mouse method, I'll go slow for you here. If you go up to File, place. You'll also notice if I go to file place, InDesign teaches you your shortcuts to help you become faster and more efficient later on in life. I prefer my keyboard shortcuts to actually having to go through mouse menus because like in Back to Future 2, if you have to use your hands, it's like a baby toy. But also, I find it easier to remember the shortcuts. They're not just shortcuts to get you there faster. They're shortcuts for quicker rote memorization. If you remember Command D instead of file, place. It's a quicker thing in your brain to remember and wastes less thought, time, and processing and you become more of a reflex. But let's place. I'm going to go navigate now to the project resource, our standard color printing SVG, and I'm going to open. And that places the file inside. You can see now what looks like a horrifyingly wrong situation. And let me comfort you, it's not bad. This is how it's supposed to work. The box I gave was 2.75 inches wide by 3.75 inches tall, which is my 2.5 by 3.5 card plus an eighth inch bleed on every side. The document that I dropped in was significantly larger. But you have to think about this a little bit differently. This is not exactly a crop. The image is not exactly cropped. The image itself that I placed inside here still exists in its entirety. If I double click and I zoom out, you can see the gold line extension around the outside edge of how big that image actually is. In fact, let, let me do something I'm gonna undo. This is not something you need to do, but for demonstration purposes, if I double click in the corner, it will make my frame the size of my image. 
And even then, it's still only the size of my artboard. You can see that there's more that we're not seeing. Undo, Command Z. Very important, one of those shortcuts you really should learn. So what I'm gonna do is be all fiddly-like, and I'm going to move by taking the hand, that's the wrong hand tool, by taking the white arrow, and you can move the inside. I'm gonna go find myself to the first top left corner of my file of the actual cards I want, which is the Ace of Clubs. And I'm gonna manually center it this time. Judge me if you must. This is just getting you used to the idea of how this works. See these cards, you'll notice actually have a white bleed space around them to show you their full printable trimmable size. There, I have the first one in place. Now I'm gonna show you some secrets here on this and also talk a little more about it. So that frame that we built, think of it as a window into the world of whatever file you brought in. As you know, as we all sit in our living rooms and bedrooms working together this semester, you probably have a window that looks outside somewhere. And just to understand how the frames to images work in InDesign, remember that your window does not contain the world. The window is your way of seeing into the world from whatever room you're in. But the size of the window does not change the size of the world. It just changes the size of the hole you're looking out of your wall through. So the frame is like a window that lets you see into your design. Anyways, if you want to, you can make that smaller and it will crop it off. But if I open it back up, it's still there. It doesn't actually affect the image. Again, the beauty of InDesign is that it doesn't touch that image. So I'm gonna show you the secret to doing all of this rather efficiently. We're going to copy, Command C. We'll go to the next page, scroll down a page, Command, Option, Shift, V, which is also under Edit, Paste in Place right here. This is one of my favorite functions because it lets you drop something in the exact same location on the next page or on the same page. It lets you line up items precisely with mathematical perfection, things that make me happy. So I'm gonna do something a little bit janky. I could go in and actually properly measure this or I could click and if you get that little center circle that kind of looks like a photo crosshairs when I click on this, those two white, kind of hazy circles, the black outlines. If you click on that, you're moving the inside and not the outside. So I move this over in one good move. I can get it, not quite. If, you, if I can get that lined up in one go, I can then figure out how far to move this to get the next one. But maybe we should do this a little bit more scientifically. If we open up our frame for a minute, we can take a box and cheat on a measurement and measure by drawing a box from here on the left side of the bleed of the first card to the same left side of the bleed of the next card. And you can see that in my little thing that the width of that is three and a half inches. You can also see up here at the top that three and a half inches is that width. So now, if you come in and you click on the, the file inside, actually we can go ahead and close this down. And just knowing that size is all we really need. We could delete that box we use just for measurement. You click to make sure you have the inside highlighted. You know you will because you have that gold outline instead of the blue one. You can then say object transform move. And you're gonna move it horizontally 3.5 inches. So we'll hit a preview and that was wrong. So that means it moved the wrong way. So we'll do horizontal negative 0.35 inches, 3.5 inches and now you see a two. And we say, okay. Now watch this. We're gonna copy this one Go to the next page, paste in place, man option shift four. Whoops. Anyways, sometimes you have to fiddle with it a little bit. Maybe it doesn't like to work with the whole thing, but now you see the three is built onto the right spot. So let's copy this, paste it on the next one, command option four, and it moves it over because it continues, the command option four is do it again. That says repeat the previous thing. So they copy, paste in front, command option four, that moves it automatically to the next part of the grid. And you're gonna keep doing that throughout this whole thing. And if you're OCD like I kind of am, you can also recrop it back down. 
and make it so it fits right in and you don't have to see the other stuff just like that. So now you don't have the extra off the thing. But if you're worried about this, remember that hitting W previews what'll print. Here's a good example. When I hit W on that four clubs, three and five go away because only what's within that white little card space is actually what's gonna print. We're gonna pause here for a moment and we will come back and look at imposition and export. Thanks for watching.